For more on this story, we're joined tonight by Rana Furuha. She is the senior editor of the overseas editions of Newsweek magazine. Good to see you again, Rana. Thank you. So what exactly is going on in Greece? How much trouble is the country really in? Well, quite a lot. Their, their credit has been downgraded, and this is the first time this has happened to a major European nation since 1948. And it's probably the first, uh, as we've heard, in a line of downgrades, which could lead, lead to sovereign bankruptcy at some stage. So it's a big problem. But you, do you think it's symptomatic of a wider shift that's going on from Western Europe to Eastern Europe. Talk, talk a little bit more about that. Actually, I would say it's indicative of the major global trend of our time, which is the shift of wealth and power from West to East. It used to be that European countries would chastise Africa and Latin America and Asia for getting into these sorts of problems. Now it's the European countries that may be having to go to the IMF. And as we heard in that report, Greece isn't an isolated example. Uh, what other co European countries are in trouble and when do you think that their problems will really come to the surface. Spain has been downgraded. Uh, we could see problems in Portugal, Italy. Um, all of these countries as well, some of the Eastern European nations, which were very fast growth countries in the boom days, are now having problems. And we could see further downgrades in the next three to six months, I would say. What's it going to take to fix these problems? A lot of money. Um, I think that what this says is that the euro is not going to take the place of the dollar. I think that's one of the major shifts we'll see here. The dollar may get a bit of breathing space uh, as a result of some of these changes. The euro is plunging. It's clear that it's not going to overtake the dollar as a reserve currency. And this could give the U.S. and the Obama administration, if they're smart, time to rethink, perhaps start a plan as to how to get our debt in order. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you the next question is, well, what are the implications for the United States? I think that um, it underscores the global debt problem, the seriousness of this, and the fact that you can see uh, a sovereign default, a country literally going bankrupt. Uh, it would be a terrible thing to the global economy if that happened here. But again, I think this does underscore that the, the dollar is still uh, the, the, the currency of, of last resort, if you will. And this puts the, the U.S. in a position of power for a little while longer. And in terms of the, the wider problem, problems that are going on within Europe's economies, are, are these things that can be fixed with government policy or that are they deep-seated and a lot more structural and will take a lot more time to fix? Well, countries like Greece, Spain, Italy, they have huge black market economies. They have major structural problems. But for Europe as a whole, this is going to mean some major fiscal tightening. And it's also going to mean that countries like Germany and France and the UK may have to take more of the burden, and that will be politically problematic. And just very briefly, there had been some resistance from the European Union to to extend a bailout to, to Greece. What was behind their hesitation in this instance? Well, I think that that more responsible nations think, well, why should we bail out these sort of feckless, fiscal, you know, feckless uh, neighbors to the south, if you will? But the whole point of the union is that you do bail your neighbor out. And I think that that's what we'll see in the end. All right, Rana, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.